Some of you have traveled from very far away. Some of you might be still struggling to wake up. Um, some of you are battling traffic. Um, I'm really grateful that we managed to have you all here in, uh, in the same place. Um, my name is Alex Gregg. Um, I'm anchoring this conference together with Jeanette. So you're going to see Jeanette popping up many times. Um, later, she'll introduce our team with us. You know, the people have been working with us very closely. Um, a lot of M's. Where do we start? This is supposed to be setting up the tone of the, con of the conference, right? It's almost like a point of direction. Where do we go from here? So every conference has a story. So this was the story. It was around about, I think, July. I was at another conference in Leicester, and I got a call from our ambassador here. She said, we need you to organize something along the lines of young people. And I said, duh. And information, or something like that. And the first word which came in, you know, I just said, oh, well, that's pretty complicated. Uh, for a start, I'm not young. I'm 61 years old. I do teach young people. I teach anybody from age 18 upwards. When it comes to information, whatever we think information is, it's pretty complicated. But I think the worst thing was I got a bit of a deja vu, I'm afraid. Because exactly three years ago, we were organizing a conference in Malta on something called the Post-Truth Society. So that was the first thing I said, haven't we been here before? 2019, 2022 was changed. So my idea is to take you back to go forward. You know, John Lennon says, how can I go forward when I don't know which way I'm facing? So we're going to do that a bit now. So we're going to see if this video works. This was the video we showed in November 2019, assuming the tech works. I need some sound. It stopped. <laughs> You're going to try it with the sound? Hey. I turn on the TV, open the newspapers, and I see stories of chaos. Olha que no meu entender, pode ter sido potencializada por ONGs, porque eles perderam grana. Um. <laughs> These things are actually abuses. Literally, I'm so exhausted. What have you been doing? I've been having sex 500 times a day. And now you come here for a press opportunity. Well, actually, there's no press here. What do you mean there's no press here? Who are these people? to make political advertising more transparent. Obviously that has proved to be false reporting. some other influencers, people who I really look up to, and have them help me show you just like, you know, things no one knows. How dare you? Daphne Caruana Galicia. Caruana Galicia. Killed when a bomb exploded. Connected to the... Order! Order! Three years ago. And one of the conclusions was media, technology, and education have 
got us into this mess. We're in a mess. Some people said media technology and education can get us out of this mess. And what, we're gonna, what we all decided we're going to do there, and some people were there, here, now, we said, let's set up a community of practice. We'd already decided that we're going to have another conference uh, in, in Amsterdam, because somebody said we'll host us there. Young people had already started to engage. And then this happened. And that changed things. So we went from uh, organizing conferences to all being stuck at home with things going up our nose. Um, I, I managed to rally some people around the idea of, well, let's do something. So book, book plug. We got a book done. How effective was the book? I think the really important thing is what's changed. Has anything changed since 2019? This lot have gone. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. We learned how to socially distance, whatever that meant. Don't touch, don't talk, don't speak to people. Keep your distance, lines, elbows, different parts of the body we started to use. I think coming from the education sector, I went from this stuff, which was not always very entertaining, because you never know what the people at the back are going to be doing, no, to educating some of our you know, less digitally literate members of staff that they had to use Zoom. Oh, God. Suddenly, we could look into students' bedrooms, and they would switch off, and some people wouldn't switch off. Now we think that it's all good, because we can do blended, whatever that means. But in other parts of the world, there are campuses which are closing down, because the students have become a bit more discerning about what is it, this education that they're getting now. This happened. Nobody expected this to happen. Was the media to blame? Was new media to blame? Was alternative media to blame? Was platformer to blame? Shame? Black Lives Matter. Protests. Labeling. Me too. Which made people like me suddenly aware of alternatives we weren't aware of. Cancel culture? Whatever that means, then, now, in the future, whether it means that an 11-year-old can get cancelled because of something she tweeted two years ago or not. We now talk about TikTok. You know, 18-year-olds now tell me that Facebook is done, dead. It's now Instagram or maybe TikTok or maybe something else. But in the meantime, there's a lot of money going into this stuff. I can't see anybody with a headset here. Maybe you will be in a couple of years' time. I don't know. This hasn't gone away. You're all being watched. There's cameras here. Cameras outside. Cameras everywhere. We watch everybody. My son tells me, it's really weird being a 20-year-old, you know? What can you share online? Somebody might see what I'm doing. Mind you, at 12, he was telling me, why do you put that picture of me on Facebook? You don't have my permission to do that. So, surveillance. Surveillance culture. Surveillance capitalism. All of that kind of stuff. This stuff. But we knew this stuff was happening. It's just somebody had to come out and say, you know, <laughs> we're not really, you're looking after young people or young people's interests over here. Conspiracy theories abound. Stuff which my generation maybe thinks is mad, but maybe it's not so mad, or facts, no facts. Trust in experts, mistrust in experts. You're old, you don't know what you're doing. Narratives. The kitchen sink. Because <laughs> this might be about to happen, no? And the latest is what? That Musk is going to say, you know, maybe put Twitter behind a paywall? Maybe. Or maybe not. And in the meantime, my students, my, my colleagues, we're still stuck a bit in our echo chambers, aren't we? Still looking at our phones, still tweeting each other. People are still performing. You can buy really good equipment if you want to perform to an imaginary audience. Most of my students look at me and say, you're old, you're 61. I have NFTs. I am an influencer. I have 5,000 people following me. Nobody follows you. And yet here we are. 
or looking at our screens. The only one good thing we know is that screens are the way we will continue to interface with life. We haven't found an alternative, except maybe for what Zuckerberg wants us to have, the interface. So these are questions I'm asking, and I think everybody should consider. First of all, are we stuck in a moment? Again, when you're young, time maybe doesn't matter that much. Other times of your life, it really starts to matter. I'm really stuck in a moment. Is this history repeated? My mother used to tell me life is really in black and white. And yet people take very dogmatic views about things. It's good, it's bad, it should be cancelled, it should be cancelled. So I'm going to offer you an alternative, and it's based on a conversation I had last week with a colleague of mine called Michael Bajer, who is at Iowa State University and couldn't join us. And so along the line, Mike said this, and I do time that. He said, truth is grounded in place, in culture, but also in time, in a moment. And then he said, the internet makes place and culture both eternal, but also meaningless. And it also renders time asynchronous, not in the moment. In the same way that this generation is used to looking at a screen and somebody rings and say, I shouldn't be answering that, they should send me a text. This whole thing about not quite living the moment is something which is all pervasive. That's what Mike thinks. I think it's what I think now. But does it matter? I think the most important thing about time is let's make the most of our time together here. This type of event takes a lot of organization, preparation, time, money, whatever it is. But the most important thing is not what these people here, but networking with your peers, maybe hopefully getting encouraged to do something about things if you think something needs to be changed. So let's make the most of our time together. And the, at the risk of playing on the story, you know, when I said every single conference has a story behind it, I would say, let's make some history. You're being recorded. This will be recorded. Will you use snippets of it in the future to learn, even from the mistakes which may be made, but occasionally some insights as to what people are going to say. Okay? So that's what I had to say. <laughs>